Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your power, your light, your grace will prevail over us. We pray that your word will dispel every darkness. Let there be such a demonstration of the power of light over darkness. I pray, O oh God, that age-long captivities will come on their knees tonight. Open us to the mysteries of the Spirit. Let there be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ. hallelujah let me just make one or two announcements and then we'll go into the word of god tonight's word will come with fire fire every time most times when the lord wants to reveal to me how the meeting will be he will use one of the emblems of the supernatural to signify what he's doing and while i prayed i saw fire that's what i saw fire is one of the elements of the supernatural they are the there are five elements that god manifests himself with there is the earth there is light there is water and so i know that god is doing great things tonight and we bless god for the worship team and that which they did tonight please take it here for me we started a series last week examining the subject of deliverance and um, I must confess to you that there's so much to teach especially when you dapple into this subject and um, my focus please let me have your attention my focus is not necessarily to give us a thorough exegesis on the subject of demonology but I'm limiting the context of my teaching in this series just to the aspects of deliverance there's something that i want us to understand about the nature and the character of deliverance are we together so i have edited a number of things and um, we may not go into certain very deep details like the origin of satan the pre-adamites the nephilims uh, sons of belial and all of these other things that help to extensively talk about the kingdom of darkness i hope that in another series we'll get to it but um i just want to show us um the the deliverance dimension that's that's just where i want us to focus on and then to help us understand and appreciate a few things let us also take note that the motif behind this series is to help to create intelligence in the area of deliverance i think that um, there is a lot of gap in knowledge which stems from ignorance or exaggeration and so we're hoping to create a system of balance many in an attempt to scorn at the subject have become victims of what only this subject can set them free from and like the dear lady shared when she was here and then others um in an attempt to focus on it have pushed it beyond its boundary of relevance and their whole lives regardless of supposed deliverance does not show anything around the victory of christ so there is always a need to put everything in context are we good tonight hold hands while you're seated and let's just pray in the spirit to open up our capacity for spiritual understanding Shabla kato sikete balados Shabrando skadaba ho shalabaria katos We pray in the spirit so that our spirits will be alive and our minds will be receptive to the truths of God's word Shadabanda skalabara haso de balikish Zebrete keto koso de balada balada bots
let the scroll be opened let the mysteries be unveiled hallelujah praise the lord tonight we are going to be looking at the subject of deliverance and then i will be sharing with you we started last week i'm just giving you the course content for tonight's discussion we'll be looking at the subject of deliverance and then we'll also revisit again what i call access points helping you to understand the gateways that authorize darkness please listen you are listening for yourself you are listening for your families and for those following online regardless of what your perspectives are about the subject of deliverance give me a chance to bring you the word of god and let's look at it together uh, as always we are allowed to vet the quality of whatever is being communicated and to receive that which we believe is right but it's important to at least give a chance there are people once they hear they leave they don't even wait they just close their hearts and um, it's, it's going to be a dangerous experience if you just shut your heart at any dimension and any matter of the kingdom because jesus himself addressed this subject so let's give ourselves a chance to be built by the word of god i will be teaching on levels of satanic influence that will be the third discussion as god grants us grace i'll do my best to see that we end on time so that we can rest we have a lot already tomorrow levels of satanic influence or satanic activities would we'll look at it and then if god grants us grace and the time we're able to manage time well we will look at the flesh praise the lord obadiah chapter one there's just one chapter and verse 17 let's begin our teaching for tonight obadiah one and verse 17 but upon mount zion shall be deliverance it's amazing where deliverance was meant to happen it was not meant to happen outside then if delivered you come to mount zion the fact that you experience deliverance is proof that you are standing upon Mount Zion. Are we together? So this already tries to settle a very wrong notion that deliverance and etc. should happen outside of the church, outside of where God is. Then when you are delivered, you now come. God's system has always been come as you are and then you are made into what he wants you to be. So upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. We began last week by saying that there is a relationship between the mystery and the ministry of deliverance and obtaining your possession. Notice from this scripture the Bible says it is their possession so it is not a possession that is someone else's and then it will be given to you it is your possession it is your inheritance are we together so there is no doubt to the fact that it is a it is it is allotted already for you but in order to possess it although it is your possession being your possession is one thing becoming a possessor of your possession is another thing are we together so um this is a very good platform to begin tonight's teaching the bible says the house of jacob shall possess their possession that means it is possible that they do not possess their possession it is your possession it is your inheritance but to come into the experience of that possession the bible says there is something that happens and that's what we are discussing what is deliverance let's discuss that subject what exactly is deliverance the bible is full of texts that talk about deliverance from the old testament the gospels the epistles and even in the book of revelation so what exactly is deliverance 
um, let me give us a foundation and then I will give you my definition now the first thing I want you to know about deliverance please look up before you write is that um, generally deliverance has to do with a system of rescue a system of freedom from maybe bondage danger I'm giving you the overall scope every time we mention the word deliverance it has to do with a system that provides rescue a system that provides freedom from bondage from danger and generally speaking from evil every time we talk about deliverance it has to do with rescue it has to do with emancipation it has to do with freedom from any of these three bondage danger and then generally speaking evil are we together let's look at two scriptures exodus chapter 6 and verse 6 exodus chapter 6 and verse 6 i hope i'm right it says wherefore say unto the children of israel i am the lord and i will bring you out the word bring you out there is the word deliverance I will deliver you from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. So we see different expressions here that relates to deliverance. The Lord is saying, I will bring you out from their burdens. I will read you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment why this is because of what happened in chapter 1 and verse 11 let's go to chapter 1 and 11 same exodus chapter 1 and verse 11 it says therefore they did set over them taskmasters listen carefully the purpose of the deliverance in chapter 6 is because of a situation that we find in chapter 1 that therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities Python and Ramesses all of the gods of Egypt so they were they were subject to a system of labor a system of bondage and a burden what was the assignment to build cities for other gods are we together they were mandated as an act of affliction to build treasure cities where they kept the 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 booties that they had gotten from war and from oppressing neighboring nations and then to also build different tabernacles places of rest for all their gods and their idols and the lord said that i will bring you deliverance so before there is need for deliverance there must have been a system of bondage are we together that subjects men that subjects territories that subjects both animate and inanimate things to some sort of danger some sort of oppression and so on and so forth are we together let's look at colossians chapter one paul is teaching the church in Colossae. colossians chapter one verse 13 and 14 then i would like to teach something very briefly here before we move on it says who hath delivered us talking about jesus now who hath delivered us from the power of darkness everybody say power of darkness notice the bible didn't just say he delivered us from darkness he delivered us from the power of darkness that means darkness is powerful darkness is a force it is very unwise to believe that um, all of these spiritual forces are not powerful we only say they are powerless relative to the superiority of God's intelligence and the power that is now in motion through the Christ are we together when you are contrasting darkness relative to the excellency of God's power his all-surpassing victory then it is valid to consider satan and all his cohorts as powerless but relative to the spiritual advantage the plane from which these spirits operate it is very childish and immature
to believe that they do not wield any kind of power and force on their own even a normal human being who can access the realm of the spirit any dimension higher than the three-dimensional realm has an advantage over one who does not sustain that uh, that ability are we together now i have taught you that any dimension you can access outside of the three-dimensional realm will provide you an advantage over the natural person scientists would tell us that even lower animals that we call lower have the ability to perceive danger and perceive reality that the normal man who is unrefined are we together cannot perceive is that true we see dogs we see animals respond to people some of them have very superior sense organs these are beings that are not empowered by any kind of spirit whatsoever yet they wield an advantage so it is it is i'm, I'm just buttressing on this to help us understand because you see one of the greatest challenges with the body of christ is we just copy everything we know we never take out time to allow the spirit of revelation to break down the truths that have been passed down from generation to generation just because we read it in a book and a senior man of god advocated it or certain people that represent pillars to the body most of them had the understanding but most of us just receive it as head knowledge and we teach it in bible schools so most believers just have the chaff of that knowledge there is no substance that backs up their conviction are we together so darkness is powerful paul is not ashamed to tell us in fact here's how jesus said it he said behold i give you power are we together that's luke 10 19 can we just run there and then return back to colossians luke chapter 10 and verse 19 behold i give you power listen the word power there is not the greek word dunamis is the word exousia is the word authority right uh, is is a is an authorization to legislate rather than the ability to by yourself cause change are we together behold i give you exousia authority to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over how many all the power jesus himself is acknowledging that the enemy has power but that he has given you an ability to manifest and legislate above that power and then it says nothing shall by any means hurt you the only reason why nothing shall hurt you is because you are operating from a dimension that is higher than the existing that means if something is hurting you it means you are not accessing and working with that power or you do not have knowledge on how to put it to work are we together now god bless you so back to colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 i hope we are together who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and then the bible says hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son 14 in whom we have redemption through the blood even the forgiveness of sins so he's telling us the basis for that translation that the the possibility to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son has happened on the basis of redemption and that by the blood are we together now so salvation is a form of deliverance the salvation that has been given believers today that we enjoy the bible does not just call it redemption alone the bible calls it deliverance what then is deliverance write this down i did my best to scrabble an intelligent definition that will capture everything that i believe the word of god um says about deliverance so let's let's try and see if my definition makes sense ready deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of christ or jesus christ don't worry take it gradually i will repeat myself deliverance is a system for experientially 
establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ I'm going to continue I'm just breaking so that you write let's take it again deliverance is a system for experientially underline the word experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ can I continue over Satan comma demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan demons and all the powers of darkness over Satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives by this definition we see that deliverance for a believer and the scriptural approach to deliverance is much more than the activity of physical exertion like a present day fight deliverance is concerned with establishing making a reality that has been finished to become your experience here and now are we together so that deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of christ jesus over satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives i wrote something small here that deliverance um and then by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in christ today is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it listen carefully our approach to the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare has to do with establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting to create it it's important that you have this understanding and this revelation alone will make all the difference in your approach to the subject of deliverance and the subject of spiritual warfare that you and I should approach the subject of deliverance from a perspective that seeks to establish and manifest the victory that is already wrought through the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ rather than an attempt to physically exert energy to fight and win as though it was a product of your own exertion i think this is this in itself i can dwell all night explaining this because this may be the reason why many many well-meaning individuals and by extension deliverance ministries get little or no victory out of the the abundance of the physical exertions many of us here may be victims of that experience so we are not talking about a state here where you fight for victory in terms of physically confronting Satan one on one as it were I will tell you where that revelation came from are we blessed so say after me deliverance for the believer has to do with establishing and manifesting authority over darkness rather than fighting for it are you getting the point now let me dramatize something here please come doctor come watch this you stand here and um, hold my book this is your inheritance this is your possession please look up I want to dramatize something that will help us you stand here and then ah, they are all ladies where are the gentlemen Sam come now watch this the Bible says and you have to understand this is where I think many people find confusion when the Bible when the Bible speaks look at this very carefully God speaks from the standpoint of eternity he does not speak as if he's talking within the frame of time are we together so in the speakings of God 
he always speaks with the expression of completion which is not a lie but then the dynamics of converting the prophetic realities that have been finished in christ to now become the experience of the saints is where there is confusion are we together so the bible tells us from the foundation of the earth the lamb was slain but there are still people going to hell today are we together if the lord is to talk to you now if you were to see jesus jesus will look at you and tell you you should not be crying financially because you are walking in abundance that's how he talks but then you will think that he's being rude and sarcastic to you because at the point he's talking to you you may not even have five naira he cannot speak otherwise his his viewpoint spans he's not dimensional in his approach if he breaks himself to be dimensional it's an act of his mercy to help man understand him are we together that's why he's called alpha omega the word and there was just an expression to help us comprehend he is both the beginning and the end so to him there is nothing like beginning and end in his dimension that does not exist are you getting my point now so god can speak to you and say emeka finish the house by tomorrow whereas you don't even have land that's god speaking emeka finish the house by tomorrow and as at the time he's talking your landlord is waiting with a policeman in front of you and god will never talk about the landlord emeka i have given you your house and your key you will even see it in a vision god giving you key and you say thank you and then wake up from the vision with a, a rude knock from the door by an angry landlord now how do i reconcile what i have seen because god will not change he speaks once it is only you that hears twice the first hearing is the hearing of the flesh the second hearing is now the hearing of the spirit that brings understanding once have i spoken but you need to hear twice because the first hearing is from a carnal point but then the holy spirit now helps you to have the ear that the bible says he that hath an ear the second kind of ear you now hear from the spirit the hearing that brings understanding that's why the bible says faith comes by hearing but there is a superior hearing hearing now not just by your senses by the word of god are you understanding what i'm teaching you now so this guy is now confused and he's saying in the realm of the spirit the lord spoke to me and said i have given you abundance yet nothing is happening and then the lord appears to you and you are trying to say oh lord look at all the demons and the witches and then the lord tells you something like my grace is sufficient or my victory is still in force and you wake up and you are like oh god how can you be speaking like this whereas in experience that's what paul was trying to teach the church in hebrew he was quoting from psalm 5 what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him the bible says you have made him lower than elohim are we together you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and that in doing that you did not leave anything under his feet but he creates a dimension he said but as it is today we do not yet see experience so you must be able to balance between the prophetic communications of the spirit the prophetic communications of the word and the experiential manifestation of the same in your life otherwise you will die like a chicken quoting the word of god between the prophetic speakings of god and the manifestation in your life there is a mystery that connects them and those who have this are the ones who become possessors it is your possession in christ but it takes an understanding of what to do to make it your possession here forever O oh lord thy word is settled where it never said in your life thy word is settled in heaven it will take engaging these mysteries to make the word settled in your life ah your help has come this this is already a deliverance for someone because for many years you kept jumping oh my god i see victory jesus said it is finished everything is all right wonderful amazing my life is full of beauty and glory you are not lying but after 10 years 15 years your father said this thing 
and while he was saying it sickness was eating him up till he died I, I don't want you to feel bad i'm not trying to be sarcastic are we together you said this yourself and after 10 years there's nothing in your life that demonstrates the victory of christ and some out of that frustration will just say this is a lie no it's not a lie forever your word is settled but to know how to make it our experience one of the mysteries that have been allocated by the wisdom of god to make spiritual realities that are established in the christ to manifest in our life is called the mystery of deliverance are you getting the point now it is not the only kingdom mystery i've taught you many of them we're approaching one of them now this gentleman wants to possess his possession this is a son of jacob he's read obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 he's believed are we together now because the bible says whoever believes our reports the arm of the lord will be made manifest in his life now this brother believes but every time standing between him and that inheritance just turn to face me sam is an obstacle this brother has read in the bible that we have been translated colossians 1 13. it didn't say we will be the bible says we have been but he's seen something that is is a cause in his life watch this this guy knows the word of god i hope you understand that he has believed he's a worker in church and he has seen that every time people get to the edge the edge of breakthrough something happens now he said in the name of jesus i don't believe this i am exempted and to his shock regardless of that confession his life is still a victim of it that thing happens as if the thing didn't hear him are you getting what i'm saying now please listen very carefully okay this guy comes from a family where everybody is barren i'm sorry sorry for this are we together everyone is barren and now he makes up his mind no it is god that makes everyone a fruitful i mean he can make the wilderness to be fruitful you know children are inherited from the lord now he has confessed that he has done that well and it is true but in experience now he gets married and to his shock he finds out that his wife cannot get pregnant and he says no the devil is just joking let me just release my faith and you watch what happens one month becomes one year becomes two years becomes decades becomes 20 years and the man is angry by 75 and he's no longer believing in jesus and when you come to him as a zealous young man war giant from koinonia man of god since i was blind say if you don't get out of here i will slap you i spent 60 years forcing the word to work my conclusion is that god alongside all the scammers called preachers are liars some of us that person i just described may be your father may be your mother they will show you pictures of them and reinhard bonke when he was young and tell you i and tear it in your presence and say i don't believe all that junk again the frustration that comes you come from a family that is full of poverty and goodness you found the truth and you are happy you are rejoicing over it and all of a sudden you find out that you are now a graduate and your elder sisters are looking at you and say we graduated 15 years ago none of us the highest among us just got a contract job for one week and it was over and you come and say it's because you know how arrogant we are young people when we are just touching revelation we mock at others and laugh and say oh sisters it's because of the church you are going to me i'm going to koinonia wait and see what happens then you are a graduate and you celebrate the first christmas as a graduate with no job it touches you and you pretend i don't know i think god is working something powerful after you dance and sing and do what you know to do by five years you now sit with them in a discussion and you are like ah, ah. so this this thing is true this is why my mother was not happy this is why my father was not happy this series is saving you many of you many of you are already going through what i'm saying now and if you don't open your eyes and your ears to listen to the way out you will be very frustrated how about men of god like our sister shared who come from terrible families with idol worship and then they get born again filled with the holy spirit and begin to walk in strange miracles and start a ministry and say oh god god forbid i mean i used to be 
from a family of idol worship now i'm free and the guy begins his ministry after five years he finds out that the members go down everything goes down an attack comes on him and the ministry and he goes to tell his uncle and the uncle laughs and say why do you think i stopped being a pastor because i was once a pastor were you told he said no so well let me educate you i was once a pastor the crusade that happened in this city i was the chairman organizing committee the same thing that happened you would try to argue and say uncle my own is not like your own he said you he says it's the same thing it's there and then many of you now just like i was stand and you are confused you say no no let me go back to the bible and you still see it there and have translated us from the kingdom of darkness and have translated us not will translate and have translated us many of you rush and come to us men of god and say sir i read here and have translated me i believed everything you said why is my life like this listen to what we tell you you don't have faith or you really don't believe it i if you be look at me i'm rich i'm entering a jeep so he said i'm okay money can deceive to think just because you have a jeep and you have a nice watch you are free no there are many other dimensions you don't have to be delivered to be rich there are many people under yokes of darkness that are millionaires so be careful lest you use money the reason is because money has a very funny way of making your needs met so it can lie to you to think just because you don't see any obvious need yet you are free we have used money for a long time in the body to mean that i am free and say what's the proof look at my estate look at five cars look at a flourishing church does that look like someone under oppression my helpers reading volumes of books i went to almost every bookstore i could find and gathered books i read books to prepare myself on fire i was seeing the power of god move through my life i was having encounters and then to my greatest shock in the midst of that spiritual height demons come to me regardless i mean i started quoting scriptures from secondary school you would receive awards there were 52 scriptures if you could quote they would give you an award i don't know how many times i got that award and you would think how then should i hide the word in my heart to quote 52 scriptures every year new ones i'm not talking of old ones i could quote chapters of the bible and here comes demons into my room and i'm shouting in jesus name the blood of jesus and they are not moving i'm saying in the name of jesus i'm a child of god and they are not moving <sighs> who will i tell this who will believe me god are you have you suddenly become weak listen when you see me just stand to talk and demons are crying find out what happened i want to show you where the problem is these demons will press my neck the anointing didn't leave me the anointing is still there the same way Elisha died of sickness with the healing anointing still in his bones why didn't the anointing work while he was deteriorating to death yet the anointing raised a dead body who didn't have faith the dead body was not begging please raise me just he came in contact with bones couldn't the anointing bring back flesh like Ezekiel 37? Because we know it's a possibility. So why didn't the anointing bring back the prophet again? There are mysteries in this kingdom. What you do not know, you can argue to your detriment. It will smash you into pieces 
like it's happening to many people we are just not honest to confront truth until we find light for me i i pray that god will make you like me i don't hear yes sir i keep searching until the truth is found many of you you see when the holy spirit refuses to allow an answer satisfy you is because there is a grace in that area he wants you to reveal to the body so you come to a man of god you come to me or anybody and we just give you explanations uh, to manage our ego and the holy spirit will say no no with all honor that's not the answer he's telling you find out so that you can help someone if i didn't pass through what i pass through now i probably will wave this teaching like many are waving and say look let's just focus on jesus and you are focusing on jesus but you are seeing that something is wrong everything the word of god declares is true it is the system for accessing it we do not know and what we have been taught is not wrong but is largely incomplete this series is to give you the balance you hear testimonies of people already look at the pastors with their churches look at the gentlemen that came someone from us just gets up another person just sends 4.5 you think the person doesn't have relatives in need doesn't he have brothers and sisters who are looking for 30,000 and he can't help them and then come somewhere i told you you're what just follow me by now this brother is frustrated oh god give me my possession and he comes and he says man of god i'm still waiting and i said don't worry abraham waited 25 years what what are you complaining about your small boy come on just be paid and i start getting angry you are getting rude you are challenging my anointing my anointing is angry with you i will curse you you see that and the brother leaves me quietly and goes back and he knows something is wrong I'm not being sarcastic I love the body listen carefully there must be an answer to this that answer is what will bring about the experience of possessing your possession that even even the critic in your life will know that the hand of God this brother has caught this this sister has caught this I prayed to God eh? and I told God I said by the time Lord we finish this series let us hear of testimonies that people will stand up and say no this is this is if not because the person sharing it is there we will think it's a lie or stage manage I told you last week you can know that deliverance has happened to a person and a family by the speed that's where you know that those realities have been piled up in the spirit for many years and it's usually an avalanche overnight doors liftings all kinds of things happen do you believe that a woman who should have had six children and has been barren for six years or for 10 years or 20 years you think it's one child that will come at once right. by the time god shifts that barrier you will be surprised the kind of testimonies that will surprise you you believe that a man that has been grounded by witchcraft for decades the only testimony he will get is a new job that gives him thirty thousand. when will he recover no that's not the kind of testimony that follows deliverance the kind of testimony that follows deliverance is a sign and a wonder God makes a statement that I can in delivering you restore the years the canker worm the palmer worm you should be married 20 years ago but then I move and give you triplets two times six children at once but upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance whatever it is and when that happens the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession hallelujah so this brother is standing then he takes an aggressive step watch this and then his eyes is open in the spirit watch this and he sees a spirit appear to him and tell him you will never make it but the Bible says behold I give you power so satan where did you even get the audacity to show up in my room remember your room is anointed remember there's a bottle of anointing oil in that room don't forget remember there's a communion set in that room 
are you getting what i'm saying remember while the demon is talking to you a bible is on your bed have you forgotten sometimes a worship song is even playing yet he shows up no invitation he didn't knock the door and talks nonsense to you and all of a sudden he leaves who will i tell this to i can't tell apostle because i'm I will keep quiet and that's how many of us have been keeping quiet as a man of God you finish preaching in a crusade and go back in the night and a spirit comes to molest you to even sleep with you you get up in the morning who will I tell this embarrassing thing and while you are sitting someone comes for counseling counseling number one man of God there is a demon that comes to sleep with me every night you almost want to run away because that's your own experience too it will shock you that you will lay hands on the person and he will start manifesting and be free and you just wave the person and then return back and say my God now oh God who will deliver me I, 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 I. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, ay, 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 Ebenezer, my Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please go and sit down, guys. Let's talk now. why why does it look like there is a an extreme difficulty for the saints to make manifest the realities remember the bible says he that did not spare his son are we bible students that he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us will he not with him freely freely mark the word freely give us how many things then the Bible says that they that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, what is their heritage? They shall reign. Yet we do not see this thing happening. That means something is wrong. So deliverance. Is one of the mysteries that was allocated by the wisdom remember the Bible says that it should be made to principalities and powers the manifold not one fold manifold the multifaceted wisdom of God deliverance is one of the expressions of the multifaceted wisdom of God so deliverance is concerned with experientially establishing and manifesting the victory and authority that we have in the Christ rather than physically fighting for it let me tell you where this fighting mentality came from and of course the Bible says we should fight the fight of faith and all of that but I mean this kind of fight have you seen people go to sleep and they tell you ah I, I fought and this and in a dream you saw yourself fighting the victory was almost there are we together then somebody woke you you get up with anger and annoyance and say i was about to, to stab the last snake and you woke me what kind of you are you are a wicked person watch this and then you go back to sleep again and sometimes the battle continues it is because of the way spiritual things act themselves that we have believed that just because in a dream or in a vision are we together some of you even wake up from that encounter feeling physically exerted so because of that scenario of acting we now believe that warfare is about physically trying to fabricate victory regardless of what you see or the way the expressions come in the spirit the word of God remains true that Christ has won the victory are you are you with me now that's where the confusion comes from and especially for those who work very strongly in the prophetic ministry they have helped in no way to amplify this com this co this confusion because what you see if not balanced with mental transformation and a good word base you will confuse people i can stand right now and make stand and look at doctor in a vision 
and in that vision i can be seeing him inside a pit are we together and now i said doctor you are in a pit it's not a lie but that is just a prophetic symbolism to mean bondage are we together by the time i engage in whatever mystery the victory may show as him coming out from the pit so over many years of seeing different scenarios i may now write a book or i may now propose a theology are we together where people now start physically fighting to manifest their victory and this is why satan reigns over us because he's a master of the sense realm he knows that what you can see will challenge you let me ask you a question what happened to you last week with your night prayer are you not shocked at the level of attack that amplified you see that it happened for many of us right i told you it will happen because satan is the master of the sense realm you wake up in the night and sleep and go back and the same experience of them oppressing you supposedly happens again some of you as soon as you finish you went back in fact for some of you that activity has been on break since you you became on serious with god but now that you just started a little prayer all of a sudden it came now let me tell you satan will use your senses and tell you the word of god claims this if god were so powerful where is it then you will now dance to the realm of the senses and say kai that means let me go back to sleep in jesus name i must go back for the battle to come you are already defeated there's no possibility of victory under that condition in this kingdom the only instrument listen carefully the only the saints don't fight our warfare is the warfare of taking advantage of the forces of the spirit allocated to us the force of the word the force of the blood the name of jesus and all of these mysteries listen very carefully to enforce i repeat enforce if the purpose of your engaging those things is to create a physical fight you are defeated already the devil will eat you up and, and spit you watch this jesus is standing haven't walked on water to come peter says if it be thou listen carefully now bid me come and jesus says come peter gets up and started walking on water are we together now do you think while peter was walking on the water the water stopped being boisterous it still continued but it's just that because his focus was on jesus are we together that connection so the power that kept him on that water was not in his legs it was on the gaze of jesus are we together now the moment peter didn't stop walking on water he only shifted his gaze to somewhere else and his legs started going down for as long as his gaze was on jesus whatever the storm did now he's looking at jesus did not suddenly make the water quiet it was still boisterous but he was surprised that the water was not moving him the element for the victory was his connection with the eyes of jesus not his ability to walk well for as long as his legs remain but he turned his attention the bible said he saw that's what satan wants you to see satan is a master over the sense realm if he can deviate your focus to make you see the bulkiness of the challenges he will bring your faith down and strike you in a way that will affect you are we together god bless you thank you doctor we discussed access points last week that biblically speaking there are three main access points systems of authorization that satan uses that demons use all occults all spiritism and any kind of extra physical manifestation of evil thrives upon these three platforms number one covenants covenants we discussed it last week i'm just giving us a quick review number one covenants a covenant is the most powerful of the three because i told you that a covenant is a system of authorization and that system of authorization can go beyond an individual that's what makes it powerful my obedience may affect me alone are we together but a covenant can allow me to do something um look at this 
Dr. Sharon is here with his wife Shade. Are we together? If I ask doctor and I say, sir, I want to come to your house and he says no. Then I turn to his wife and say, Shade, I want to come to your house and she says yes. The covenant of marriage. Are we together? If obeyed properly, I have a right to come to that house. And if he quarrels me and say, I thought I didn't invite you. I say, no, your wife who has also become one with you allowed me. You see why covenants are powerful? Because when you see Satan veto certain things about you and comes, it's because he knows someone else you are connected to has authorized him. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The same way in Israel today, I am not aware of many Israelis who have come by themselves to call upon Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In fact, if you go to visit Israel, those who take Christians on a tour, the Jewish people are shocked that Christians are crying when they see some of these monuments. To them, it's tourism. They are waiting to be paid. And they see it just come. So this is the cave where my Savior laid. And you kneel down. And the Jew there is in shock. What kind of people are these? You are being emotional. You go near the wailing wall. And you are crying and wailing for your sins. And choking prayer points at the wall. And the guy is waiting for you to finish. And just pay him his money. Yet, in the midst of it. You try to kill that Israeli. And a covenant he's not aware of. Will arise and defend him. What kind of unfair thing is this? They farm on a mountain that should not grow. Yet there is something that makes the earth to increase to them. Remember that person doesn't believe in Jesus. Yet when God looks at them, he sees Abraham and sees the covenant. The most feared nation on earth. A little nation, but indestructible by a mystery that even themselves they cannot understand the rabbinical institutes have spent decades studying what is the secret behind the immunity of the nation of Israel Israel is my firstborn God has made a covenant with the firstborn the apple of his eyes that he will kill and slay any nation because of a covenant and it's an everlasting covenant that he has made So when your grandfather was draining the blood of a goat near fire you were in the loins of prophecy but then he was saying look protect us and we contract this entire estate to you watch this then all of a sudden like I said last week some white missionaries from America just came and they said what are you guys doing they say for 150 years we have been serving this shrine. They say no, no, we bring you good news of glad tidings. Jesus has come. This is old. We present to you Jesus. And then you embrace the gospel of salvation. And you felt that peace in your heart. You were happy. You were glad. I have received Jesus. Two weeks later, the missionaries started dying one by one. Remember they are the ones who got you born again. And you were happy two weeks later your farm stopped producing as usual your peace was still in you you were happy and you love Jesus then you decided to come together to pray and while you prayed and prayed and prayed you just found out that one of your child started running mad on the street listen brothers and sisters there are seven Gospels Jesus left with the church I'm not about to preach it now but the gospel of salvation is only one of them there is the gospel of the kingdom it is the gospel of the kingdom that reveals to you the keys of the kingdom they are not called the keys of salvation there is the gospel of the kingdom how you engage these mysteries to manifest that which is finished from the foundations of the earth I hate to be a bearer of bad news but it's just that many of us are not honest enough to look at our lives and look at our dear parents and look at our siblings one of our dear ladies she might be here I remember it was during was it during Christmas or early New Year this year her mother and, and, and I'm sorry to just have to talk about it but her mother 
a godly woman was standing in church sir just like everybody wonderful woman of god in the presence of everybody looking at her in the house of god with the anointing of the spirit she fell down face forward in the presence of everybody and died right there prayer warriors came and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened while that would happen her father paralyzed completely paralyzed completely in this place i'm not talking of another place when i heard that i said this is it this is it i must teach this this year this is it now do you know the family of that lady will almost beat you if you go to them with arrogance and say ladies and gentlemen look i don't know what you believe but that lady i think there are few people i know that pray like that lady in terms of consistency of the spiritual discipline of prayer what could be wrong what are we not seeing when jesus walked the earth it was not like that the invincibility of his victory was incontestable what is wrong with our understanding so covenant number two i taught us that the second access point is ignorance don't forget ignorance ignorance is a force in the spirit just like faith ignorance is a force it can cause things to happen in fact the bible calls a certain class of the demonic organogram rulers of darkness that means their domain of dominion is every time there is lack of illumination when they come to a life or they come to a physical territory where there is lack of spiritual illumination their dominion is activated they are called rulers of the darkness of this world not another world so they search for everywhere there is darkness in this world and that becomes their jurisdiction of authority archbishop benson idahosa was explaining the power of light and its ability to conquer darkness and he said that there was darkness in a land it was a story there was darkness in a land for many weeks and the people in that land went to the sun to complain s-u-n and they said son please help us there is darkness in our land and the son said you mean it darkness everywhere he said yes and then it the said the son said okay i'm coming to see the darkness and when the son came there for three weeks and found out there was no darkness he said i've been you people are wasting my time i've been here for three weeks and i can't find the darkness and they said for as long as you are here the darkness cannot come so there is light the light shines the light shines notice the bible never says the light appears in darkness uh -uh. it is not the appearance of light that takes away darkness it is the shining it is the shining not just the appearance the light shines in darkness the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together number three disobedience disobedience having the readiness to judge all obedience all disobedience when your obedience is complete disobedience authorizes the gates of darkness the gates of hell to prevail over the sins very quickly let's look at levels of satanic influences blessed be the name of the lord is god speaking to someone tonight there are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints there is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in christ but there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though you are in christ let's look at it very quickly number one the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception write it down deception the first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all 
is deception and this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever it was paul who was speaking um, um which of the church now help me it says galatia the church in galatia it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you let's look at a few scriptures very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and verse 13 if we can run through it very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll, look, we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and 13 media please help us second peter chapter 2 and then we'll look at revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 the bible says and many shall follow their pernicious ways deceptive ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of the bible is talking of a kind of deception here are we together now i don't want to go into other uh, more modern versions so that you see what pernicious there is but just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here go to verse 12 please 12 and then 13. it says but these Paul is really, I mean, Apostle Peter here is really angry. And he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive. He said, but this, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. He says, and shall utterly perish. In their own corruption that means that believers have been made to be deceived by the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand there are many people who would have been delivered but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself he's not been deceived took them away from the lights that would have blessed them the Bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand there is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church and there are many of us men of God who are victims of this there are many believers who would not have been in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship and we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds that derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty they followed us away from their breakthrough let's look at the second revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 again media please help us very quickly we are still looking at deception three verses here i found just to explain the different kinds of deception this is talking about the great dragon revelation 12 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived how many the whole world so satan part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception he deceived the whole world the bible says he was cast into where he was cast into where uh oh earth there's a problem the deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven unfortunately he landed here what do you think will happen here on earth deception so he comes to eve and manipulates eve comes to adam and says adam come let me tell you something did god really say that a b c d and adam said well he said we may freely eat of the fruit eve said this and that and that and then he said no there is something god is hiding from you god is hiding this i hope you know that satan never um, satan never wanted i used to think satan wanted to replace god no no 
satan didn't want to replace god he wanted to run a parallel government i will be like not i will be the most high the god continue your throne sit there i will also sit, i want to sit by your right hand now you understand what happened to man satan wanted to sit let's let's go since since the word eloha elohim it is plural add me to the godhead that's what he wanted i am i have done too much i hope you know i, I like oh dear i don't want to go into the pre adamite dispensation but i hope you know when you begin to read jeremiah chapter 4 i, I don't want to go there don't, don't don't go there media um for time's sake you you realize that satan was sent as a representative of the love of god to the then civilization and the then creation what jesus represents to our civilization was what lucifer the light bearer the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he was sent he didn't just deceive a third of the angels are you seeing how powerful his deception is a third of the angels that are in heaven where god is they fell for him talk more of you and then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes and the kings and the nations lamented they say you have become like one of us jeremiah chapter 4 when you read you who brought the nations the bible says he weakened the nation that was his sin it was not just pride there was something he made that made the nations weak and now he has become like one of us and he raised up a lamentation then you begin to compare with other scriptures that's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan, the first occupant I told you of the garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. That was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there, Satan said, okay, God finish and go and let me come to the garden i'm used to he knew where to found to find eve he never said eve where are you it's god that said adam where are you satan always knows where to find them i know where frail human beings can be found let me tell you every man even from adam was born with the tendency to sin in iniquity jeremiah said did my mother he never said in sin remember it's iniquity that produces sin iniquity is a state of the heart the propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing that's why he said um, subdue replenish he used the word subdue in other words be careful there is a stranger i don't want to tell you his story but don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden and then satan came you think he came to eve one day no he had been coming Ah, Eve, so you are here today. He said, don't disturb me. God is coming in the cool of the day. He said, okay, let's talk, Eve. Satan's deception is so powerful. Remain small. He would have gotten Jesus. Read your Bible. <laughs> Satan for you. When Satan took Jesus up the mountain, he tempted it on, him on three things that, re, that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth. The first dimension was your personal need that's where the temptation started from jesus you are hungry remember part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need so satan i mean jesus don't watch stones like this where you are dying of hunger the power of god is able to turn stones into bread do it and jesus said no and satan found out okay i see you are so obsessed with your assignment you have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom next temptation let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of god why routed the hard way all the kings that are in these systems i deceive them and place them there they are my boys bow to me and let me just give you their heart instead of routing through the cross and all this pain are you seeing satan now he left jesus for a season he said i'm coming notice he never came directly to jesus again satan for you the next time we see satan coming he's coming to peter remember the goal is to jesus then the next time we see him again judas then the next time in jesus's weakness he now comes and manipulates his mind and jesus for the first time says father is it possible 
that you take this cup off me and Jesus said no nevertheless nevertheless not my way if Jesus prayed that prayer the father would have granted him yes because he always hears me Jesus said it at the grave of Lazarus I thank thee father because you always hear me I, ha I had to pray this in open so that they will know I'm not my my open prayer is not an act of unbelief I'm saying it to minister to them I thank thee because you always hear me if Jesus stopped at that prayer the father would have said well I cannot be a demon to usurp your will you have chosen to abort redemption so let it be and that would be it he still will be the word but there is no longer fruits of redemption he will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten but thank God he endured and he has now become not just the only begotten but the first begotten of the father we being the proceeds of that salvation and the Bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue. Are we together? Deception. The third way deception can happen, Ephesians 5 verse 6. God, we have to run. We have to run. At least let's, let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray. Let no man deceive you with what? Help me. So the third instrument of deception is vain words. You can use words that may look very spiritual expressions theologies spiritual communications that because they are deep and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate i can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries and in the end of it you are bamboozed by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of god on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the world are we together now that the word of god is able to establish you the Bible declares that I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So the word of God is able to give us wisdom. Wisdom. Number two, the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control. Manipulation and control. The first realm, the realm of deception, thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive that keep men subject to the laws of satan like we shared in luke 22 give us luke 22 and verse 31 this was the encounter that jesus had with peter remember luke 22 the lord said to simon watch this simon remember was a disciple of jesus although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know but the fact that they were in close touch with the word of god alone should create some system of immunity yet satan penetrated all of that and came again through simon the chiefest of the apostles are we together he was forbidding jesus that jesus should not talk about death 
No, Jesus, don't talk about the cross and everything. And Jesus would have said, Oh, Simon, you love me so much. You are such a kind man. Jesus looked at him and said, No, this is not kindness. This is, this is the devil wants to use. He's taking advantage. Now, watch this. Are you seeing how manipulation and control happens? It takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly. And Satan can buy into it to become what you. If you have compassion, Satan can use compassion to deceive you. If you have intelligence, Satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you. Here he takes advantage of Peter's compassion. Peter thought he was being sympathetic to Jesus. Jesus, you've done too much. Don't talk about death. I'm going to miss you. What does a good leader do? Oh, I, I, you guys are all wicked people. I'm talking of dying and none of you is crying. Peter, come. I love you. In fact, when I, when, when, as I'm going to heaven, you will receive my mantle for being discompassionate. Hear what Jesus says. Jesus looks at Peter with the tears running from his eyes and says, Get thee behind me. This is Jesus. Why didn't he look at the ground? Get No, no, no. He looks at Peter. Get thee behind me. Simon, Simon. He said, Satan had desired to do what? Have you. That he may sift you as wheat next verse but i have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted he say use this same formula to strengthen your brethren that means intercede for them too because satan will come are you seeing why intercession is important in a church for the saints paul was praying that we we pray that that um, um prayers and supplications be offered for those in government for this and that that we may live a peaceable and a quiet life if you don't pray satan will sway people manipulation the realm of the mind now this is where it looks as though believers are possessed are we together because you see when you are i, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now that that's for series three are we together but you notice even here in koinonia and even you know right now as i've been talking you are seeing believers that you know love god but in the pro they themselves are shocked all of a sudden they start crying and talking things and saying things and you look at them and it's ah, but this person is a believer why is this person suddenly crying out and your spirit is leaving the person the physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same it takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there so be careful so you don't blackmail believers and all of a sudden you see a mecca now standing and i touch his head and he's manifesting i says you see this guy these, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in koinonia no no that kind of talk is is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes don't blackmail believers just because of this and again we prophets and apostles i think we must be warned in jesus name because we are the ones who advocate this confusion just because you look and see a snake you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry he knows he's not a snake he knows he's not a fool he loves god with all his heart he's surprised that he was manifesting and he's ashamed and he he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall so that means they are sound not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head are we together god bless you so the realm of the mind manipulation and control this is where satan sways our thoughts ah. it is manipulation and control is so powerful it will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers not unbelievers unbelievers are so flexible the sincerity of their heart doesn't even it allows them to find truth it is believers that are quick to look at men of god 
Apostle Joshua Selman. How can a young man like that have crowd? Be careful, Lord, we are in the end times. And you will think you are being sincere. Are we together now? Manipulation. It is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much. He now uses his face to you in a dream. Watch this. Somebody that loves you and is praying for you, maybe your mother, now appears and you go and say, Apostle, prophet, I saw my mother with a knife and he said, I've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch. And all of a sudden you carry axe and straight to your village. And your mother said, oh my dad, so don't darling me anything. So you are the one behind my pain. Manipulation. Both the counselor and the counselee, both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control. Are we together now? Very important. Satan can manipulate you. The moment he sees that you are get, you are praying over a challenge in your life and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the Lord. He withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying. You will take, you will take the withdrawal to be victory established. Then you will now say, because he knows that you never seek God until there is trouble. So the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the Lord, you will see a temporary victory. And you say, ah, that's it. The dream has stopped. And so you continue in that low level and think you are safe. Whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter. Is God giving us intelligence tonight? Manipulation. Do you know, brothers and sisters, I look at my own life. Let me be honest with you. I look at my own life. I look at my background. And brothers and sisters, I'm shocked at how well-meaning my life was. And how Satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines, with theories, with all kinds of things. It's amazing. Sometimes I sit down and I listen to men of God. Sometimes I attend conferences and I see people and I see very well-meaning believers. But I am afraid, sometimes even very anointed. I am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations. The very context of their doctrine will tell you that they are under manipulation. There are all kinds of manipulations. If I get up today, for instance, as a man of God, and I believe that every other church and every other ministry in Zaria is wasting God's time except me, that state is already a sign of progress in an attack. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I believe that I'm the most anointed man of God in Zaria and that every other person, especially our fathers, our reverends here and there, they are just talkatives wasting God's time. The fact that I could accept that imagination, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that I could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that I'm a victim of manipulation and control. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack. Dishonor to constituted authority. We are all men of God. There's nothing you have that I don't have. It's a sign of this level of attack. Listen very carefully. The pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this. You will not know. Oh, I come and I say, look, I've, I've fasted for 40 days. Mr. Man, how long do you fast? He said, well, I managed to do two. Like, <laughs> he said, like, this guy. You are still, I pray that God will bring you up. Oh, I'm going to go and pray. And you think that just because you did that is a show of spirituality. It could be that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you. But it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind. Then on the other hand, you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say, look, all you guys need. You see, you see wisdom is profitable to direct. This prayer, prayer is, is all nonsense. You are just praying stupid. That state too is another version of manipulation. Are you getting the point now? Yes. 
the fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of god working for you is big deception i'm repeating this thing again i believe in prosperity we've taught a lot on success systems but learn this i think the church of the lord jesus christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life in terms of financial abundance no remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery babylon can enrich the kings of the earth she's a merchant she can make men rich so just because i'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread you can mistaken the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because i have tea and bread my life is all right it's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege and i myself can be deceived because the moment i want to think about my life an alert comes one million Rabba. that means this thing is in place if it was not in place i mean where did the devil stop it from the bank let's be very careful a man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has i'm not against abundance now i hate poverty we all do as a ministry are we together but at the same time we must be careful there are many people whose lives are not all right just because they have a lot of money they just turn and look at other poor it's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed even if he's free he will not agree because the whiplash of the uh, what call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right even when he has been delivered there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful when someone does not eat it's easy that's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses it's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage are we together manipulation and control number three find somewhere to stop here tonight is complete possession that means complete possession of your spirit your soul your body the entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness this is called possession the Bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing. Mark chapter 5. The madman in Gadara. Do you know why he was a madman? In fact, he was not even a madman. We only called him mad simply because of the context of our civilization. The goal of the demons was not to make him mad. They were just too many in one person. And so his activity looked like that of somebody who is insane. The goal was not insanity. How could you have a legion of demons and be all right based on men's context of civilization imagine the war this one is saying cut this stone and so he just remained and notice how restful he was the bible says he would sit down in a cave quietly they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings it's a long reading we'll find somewhere to stop verse 2 let's continue and when he was come out of the ship listen carefully immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what you see that was not a madman it was just a man with too many unclean spirits a man with an unclean spirit verse 3 who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains a man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him verse 5 okay and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones 6 but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him now you would think that worship is homage no this is satan at work deception this uh, let me tell you this when satan knows you will overpower him 
his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you remember in the book of acts these are the holy men of god they have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom so that the day paul goes will say since we can't see paul we know that you are allies in ministry and the deception will continue be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you it's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there so that you will be struck eventually but when he saw jesus he ran and worshipped him verse 6 and he cried out with a loud voice and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high god i adjure thee by god satan speaking through a man i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not eight oh dear I'm sorry mark is not giving us the context i'm looking for anyway we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there one of the synoptics that talks about the legions i thought that was where it will lead us for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit mark gave us an epistle of one spirit but we know i think um ah okay mark leaves it there too and he asks him what is thy name identify yourself now there has been a debate about this i don't i will talk about it next week talking to demons talking back to you we'll address it don't worry trust me my name is joshua selman justice will be done adequately are we together now and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is is that a name my name is what legion suddenly he now changes from i to we we are many don't be deceived that only one person is speaking we are many multiple spirits can exist within the same entity strange so your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you another spirit many spirits legions we are many verse 10 and he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country this is another discussion how can demons beg and say okay apostle cast us out of here but let's not go outside of new extension we have been in new extension for a long time look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have they know that there is jurisdiction of their influence and saying if you take us out of that jurisdiction there is no basis for dominion so leave us within our prescribed territory we will leave the individual you are interested in but leave the territory this is a message that many of us need to learn so it can leave you but is still around you waiting for a moment when you will grant access again jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man so demons can leave men let it not surprise you that demons leave men the bible says he goes through arid regions and not finding any place of habitation it will tell itself i will return back to my house you are born again he's still calling you his house you see how tenacious satan is my house and he comes and finds it swept clean but empty then it doesn't enter alone it gathers seven greater than itself look at that system of coordination seven greater than itself and returns and they comfortably stay in you so that the end of that man is even worse don't miss the next part three of this i will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete and i'll be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever you know because this is I, i'm already going ahead of myself i want to solve that problem there are many well-meaning believers who teach that deliverance is an ongoing continuous and forever process in a way they are right and in a way they are wrong when i teach you the dimensions of deliverance we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong the deliverance of transformation because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation it is an ongoing process christ being the standard on and the reference so in that way it is correct but deliverance like a continual exorcism 
casting away of spirit beings the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away are you getting me now all of that we're going to deal with next week we have to find a place to tie it today levels of satanic influence number one deception we're just doing a recap number two manipulation and control number three complete possession look up please of all these three levels the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept you have to understand an old jewish practice called salt covenant the salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries and they would use salt are we together you would bring your salt i will bring my salt and we'll pour it together in a vessel and mix it the condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out are we together so our redemption is in the similitude of that kind complete possession by the authority of scripture i do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit soul and body although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation are you getting where the error comes from now so like i said if i pray we're going to start praying shortly and many of you even as you are listening to me now will find out that you start manifesting and sometimes in the manifestation you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed are we together and if you do not discern with understanding you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed i've seen many people join the line after koinonia and then they ask me apostle am i a witch i said what is the meaning of that he said please i'm tired of everybody around saying i'm a witch even a witch listen carefully even a witch is not entirely possessed hmm. you see that that thing we call witch and wizards no There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman also, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans salvation is not for them they cannot access the redemptive work of Jesus otherwise probably the angels would have re repented salvation is not for angels salvation is not for any other beings in fact in fact listen very carefully the scope of salvation starts as as far as the authority of scripture reveals to us starts from the Adam the man who originated our human civilization if you were before adam there was another system are we together it was not redemption through the blood of the eternal son of god because when according to apostle peter when jesus went to hell the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-adamites we know that by those who resurrected with him are we together now the bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of jerusalem then having ascended to the father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there the atonement he now came and they all went together are we together now so we know that it is true that that uh, apostle peter lets us know that jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers but if you were not of adam that's why jesus is called the second adam so it starts from there there are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation but they are on earth satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them 
are you getting what i'm saying now so you can find some of these entities the fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials but material bodies and then you will also see them manifest in material bodies i'm not talking of entering a human being they themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material but it's not a human being those are the kinds that we that's the classic proof of wizardry are we together now it's not just an individual who has been possessed there is a dimension of that but there are beings on earth that you see they are humanoid in their context but they are not human beings they are not progenitors from from adam salvation they can't receive salvation it is this kind that the bible says spare not a witch to leave You will be blessed with a lot of balance um, um there's something I, I want to reserve it till part three because as i just said that in many of you now are afraid okay so if they don't leave you are trying to say they die so what does that mean because many of you have seen ministries uh, respectfully great ministries like mountain of fire and all of that sometimes you see them say die and then you are now saying so what is it and men of god have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die we will find out how spirits die because spirits die <laughs> hmm. jesus the greatest strength of satan the one factor that makes satan look powerful over lives is one word the flesh write it down the flesh next or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it we'll start from there the flesh i have to stop now no matter what level of deliverance you go through every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh are we together now this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in in futility comes from and attempts to continue to cast out spirits cast out spirits cast out spirits and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say uh -huh. to mean you are powerful and is waiting he knows so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that god has brought to you are we blessed rise up on your feet rise up please you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign
majesty, we declare your majesty. Sing it as we enthrone his majesty over all the works of darkness. One minute we are going to pray just two prayer points i like you to lift up your voice and declare that in the name of jesus i'm walking in the experience of the victory the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the death of jesus the victory of his triumphant resurrection lift your voice and declare Never will it become a prophetic reality. It is becoming my experience. Victory over generational curses. Victory over yokes and bondages. Lord, I declare, Lord, I declare, complete victory over the works of darkness. Hallelujah. 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 I know that I've not, I've not taught it the next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements. But one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood. Are we together? It's one of the three witnesses. The Bible says, and there are three witnesses that bear, three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It says that there are three witnesses. This is where the problem is, the earth. It says the spirit, the water, and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel, the man, had died. But Abel, the blood, was speaking. And he cried. And God himself had to say, no, something is happening. Although the man had died, but the blood is still speaking. I'd like you to engage the blood. And say, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood. I invoke the advocacy of the blood. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Over every pattern, over every curse, over every yoke. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood upon your life, upon your family, when I see the blood upon every ordinance against you, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon the pronouncements in your family, I will pass over. Lift your voice and invoke the blood. We declare that the blood speaks. We declare the mystery of God's mercy. The blood speaks. We declare the priesthood of Jesus that is after the order of Melchizedek. Higher than the Aaronic priesthood. Higher than the priesthood of Noah. We declare.
declare in the name of Jesus the blood speaks the blood speaks over the ordinance of our fathers the blood speaks hallelujah hallelujah help that lady please the bible says listen carefully just help those under the anointing something is happening here the bible says we have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue remember i'll be sharing with you every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun the sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth that's why the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you the sun does not smite in itself but i can take advantage of the sun every activity demonically on earth without the when there was darkness upon the earth there was no demonic activity until light returned then satan now returned with his activity too when there was all through the period of darkness the only entity we see is the spirit of god we never hear of any demon jumping the moment the sun was withdrawn and the moon was withdrawn so the psalmist said the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night witchcraft thrives only with the sun that's why jesus himself is called the son of righteousness that can arise with healing thou shall not be he said the sun shall not smite you that means for as long as there is sun and there is moon i can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you that will tap the power of the sun to spare you away watch this hold on joseph goes to bed and has a dream and here's his dream i saw the sun i saw the moon and i saw 11 stars remember all of them are lights they are just different kinds of light bowing to me when jacob had this jacob said so me jacob called himself the son so i will bow and my wife who gets her glory from me like the moon from the sun and then your brothers who are also stars will bow to you jacob was worried the sun bowing the sun can bow the moon can bow even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow what is this power that can make the sun bow by next week i'll share with you how god delivered me you know i've been telling you what i went through but i've not shared with you how i came out this is what i want to share with you Kai. look let me tell you you don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit you will smash the gates of darkness he said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder that you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to satan and say i dare you i will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him i'm happy his name is called joshua Hi. Watch this watch this every time god wanted to bring redemption to men he didn't just bless them he did something to the sun and the moon to realign them to their advantage hezekiah was about to die and when god turned his life he said as a sign i will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it kill you will no longer be able to touch you joshua looked at the sun and said jericho is not an ordinary city they are fortified because they have done something even with the sun and the moon and he said son 
there is war about to be fought and because of that stand still it's not just because of light sun stand still moon hold your peace and all of a sudden jericho suddenly became afraid the diviners in jericho said this thing is not working again they said what happened they said someone has done something to the sun jericho was close and they were afraid the, na the nation of israel were not fighting therefore the, the bible said they were close none went out none entered they said we're in trouble the sun and the moon you will see why herbalists do all kinds of things and drop a mirror on the ground and use a sun and or the sun and make stupid enchantments and we laugh and say oh it doesn't matter and all of a sudden you will now see why the psalmist categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night there are arrows that fly only by day the what empowers them is the sun there is the destruction that wasted in noonday once it is 12 on the dot that destruction can start be interested in what I'm sharing because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of these mysteries there is what can subdue causes yes it is the blood of Jesus yes it is all of this but the dynamics of that operation brothers and sisters the powers that hold Africa are powerful don't trivialize it Jesus is above all I don't in any way demean the power of God if I did I would not be standing here if I did the this koinonia will not be standing here if i'm faking what i tell you i will not open my mouth to declare this because that means i won't be able to sleep this night too who can stand against the lord no one can no one will still on that exercise of night prayers I know some of you have not been doing it don't do it as a ritual but I want you to receive grace to do it with understanding forget about what happens just do what I ask you to do it doesn't matter whether even if you are praying and a demon appears, don't worry you are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of God conquer the realm of the flesh are we together we are going to receive grace to pray but I want to pray for you right now please just help anyone under the anointing just two minutes and then we are done in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I, my God I'm seeing a sword right now I declare every hold of darkness Shabakato Salata even in this series help them Jesus look at what is happening there in the name of Jesus you know my voice I was once your victim but tonight has come as one who has been given the keys of David by the message of God I declare right now in the name of Jesus everyone here under the sound of my voice who is under any kind of siege right now be free in the name of Jesus 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 every family under any kind of siege 
that is mocking your Christian integrity and making God's word look like a lie. Shabaka toka sata, embreke toka shabala kata, reke toka tosh, shabas kata sata, rakato shabariata kata. In the name of Jesus, fire. I'm seeing fire. That's what I'm seeing from heaven. Shaboko tosh kabariata kata, man takoto shegete gete, embreke te loko shabarika. I'm praying for you in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I cause the plague of witchcraft. I cause the plague of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Listen, listen. Let me teach you something about the anointing. The anointing introduces possibilities in your life. These are things that were not there. If it's not there, you can't say it's there. It's a lie. Tonight, don't tell lies. There are things that are not in your life but should be there. The agency that will bring it is the anointing. There is favor that should be in your life but it's not in your life. If it's not there, everybody will know. When it comes, we will also know. There were things that were not in my life years ago. When it came, I knew to the degree that brought it. Listen, tonight is the ministry of the spirit. I told you it's the anointing that is responsible for the result. It is the, the, it is a how shall these things be? What is the dynamics? He said the power of the highest. That's how it happens. It has never changed. It is always an encounter with the anointing. Your, the job of your faith is to connect you to the anointing. It is never faith that moves God. No. Your faith connects you to the power of God. Tonight I came with an anointing. There is enough grace. There is enough anointing. I tell you this. There is enough anointing if you will believe. There is enough anointing. Your situation is not the first. Your situation is, the, is not the first. Your family situation is not the greatest. There is nothing new under the sun. God's ability is God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's working in me. Hear me. The solution to your problem is in the anointing. Seek an encounter with it. When the anointing comes to you, that's the answer. That's the answer. Listen, listen. When the anointing comes your direction, that's your answer. That's God answering your prayer. I'm not talking about falling down. 
I'm talking about an encounter. The answer is in the anointing. Your faith only connects you to the anointing. Your life can change in a moment. Your life can change in a moment. God is a prayer answering God. He answers prayers by releasing his power. He sends his power through his word in the direction where it is needed and received. Needed and received. Make answering God the prayer answering God there is a God that answers prayers koinonia he answers prayers with his power he answers prayers with the anointing the anointing is answered prayer the anointing is answered prayer the anointing kato soto kata is answered prayers barakoto shoteke telekata the anointing is answered prayer it is by the anointing there is no other way it is by the anointing please lift your hands the Lord is going to do a very quick work tonight I'm hearing people crying in the spirit and the Holy Ghost is telling me these are those who have been delayed delayed by the power of darkness I'm about to release the anointing upon people experiencing delay bring them out I stretch my hands delay Come on that judgment. You come on that judgment. Delay, delay. I stretch my hands. All the overflows online. Anyone here, any family under the spirit of delay, bring them out. Sakoto Shabariata. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. The fire of God.
breaking the chains of delay 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 bring them out Delay over, over forever. There is an anointing. I told you the anointing is the answer to the prayers. There is an anointing. I'm seeing in this main bowl 16 people. I'm seeing a number 16. Where are they? I stretch my hands. That sword of the spirit breaking delay. There are families with a covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. Breaking now. Breaking now. Breaking now. The covenant of delay. Shaka ta ta ta. sotoba. The covenant of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow three. Please look at me on the screen. You don't need to bring them here. It's too long a distance. Those inside that building. Just look at me on the screen. Because I'm seeing angels moving at overflow three. And I want to pray for you overflow three right now in the name of jesus right where you are in the name of jesus i'm seeing the number 24 24 people right at overflow three the lord is breaking delay breaking delay from them breaking delay right now breaking delay hallelujah there are still people listen i want you to believe in what god is doing i want you to have a testimony without an encounter with his power it will just be a religious service i promise you and you will go back it is the power of god the power of god is what draws the line hallelujah delay delay god is not yet done where is that family oh lord that nobody has moved forward i'm seeing delay don't worry god is coming in the anointing of the spirit is looking for a family there is a family there is a family there is a family they are here there is a family jesus help this woman there is a family this is not just an individual thing there is a family the power of god is searching for a family that the devil has kept 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 so that they will not rise hallelujah we are going to be fast tonight there are many things to do i want you to be sensitive the lord is showing me a vision now and i'm seeing a grave i'm seeing something that looks like a black leather inside that grave and i'm seeing an angel of the lord pull it out and the lord is saying this was done against a family lord where is that family right now i stretch my hands whoever programmed the earth to fight any family tonight is a night of resurrection I declare and declare let it come out now 
let it come out the breakthrough of that family the healing of that family the miracle of that family I release it now hallelujah hallelujah I'm standing here and I'm looking at this stage one two three four five six seven I'm counting seven stones and the Lord is saying these are tight destinies this is the whole destiny of a family seven of them but may the sword of the God I serve in the name of Jesus any family tied down by witchcraft any family tied down by ordinances I decree and declare by the blood of Jesus liberty tonight liberty tonight hallelujah i'm seeing a family and there are four ladies and all the four ladies have a growth either a breast lump or something in their body four ladies all of them have it in the name of jesus christ wherever this family is regardless of what what overflow i stretch my hands now in the name of jesus christ that family does not need healing that family needs deliverance i command deliverance right now i command deliverance for that family now i command deliverance now when i was praying i saw at least eight women that were barren no child doesn't matter what he is some of them connected to families and the lord told me he was going to open the wombs of every single one of them every single one of them every single one of them please lift your hands i want to pray now i believe in deliverance I really do. This mama, there's serious witchcraft in your family. As I'm praying for you now, I'm seeing a rope. A rope. I'm seeing a rope. And the Lord is saying that I should set this mama free. I'm just being fast because I want us to conserve time. Hallelujah. Listen. Do you know why we do not minister deliverance just as a religious thing? No. It is a way of separating people and the influences that tie them down. That's what I want to do now. I want to pray. Listen. Many of you inside, many of you outside are here now because of spirits you may not believe it you may not agree but it's true they are the forces responsible for the pain and the tragedies that we are going through but i want to pray for you now your own is to believe just do what i'm asking you to do we have already prayed if those spirits do not clear out of your life there is no breakthrough you, you would have come to waste your time. Let me tell you the truth. It is when those forces leave your life. Families here. Spirits have sat on the destinies of families. Do your worst. Go to school and come back and meet us. Get a job and see come back and meet us. Marry and come back and meet us. Kataparatushia. Are we together? It's time for them to go lift your hands everyone i want to pray for you now i'm going to command those devils to leave you listen it's not a suggestion they must go they must leave you 
are we together now i'm praying for you please now because the ushers are doing their best the protocol is doing their best but there is only so much they may not be able to help people there are people outside please be your brother's neighbor if someone is under the anointing and is capsizing to enjoy himself you can do well to help please you can help at least manage the ushers will come for it because this prayer i'm about to pray now is going to bring strange manifestations in people i see a lot of wild spirits wicked ancient spirits all shapes and all sizes they must go now just one instruction i just want you to shout when i ask you the name of jesus once and at the top of your voice now listen don't be surprised when you find out that demons are manifesting through you it doesn't mean you are possessed no that's a different thing altogether some of you as you are here you are representing your family nothing may be wrong with you as a person but because of your family are you ready now lift your hands father in the name of jesus you have anointed this place as a place of fire a place of grace and deliverance there are lives and destinies that have been tied down for ages and in the name of jesus at the sound of my voice may your voice be in my voice may your grace be in my voice i send an alarm to the length and breadth of this place that at the count of three anyone that shouts that name let there be deliverance right now are you ready one two three i command those devils go now go now ancestral spirits spirit husbands spirit wives yokes of darkness i command you by the power of the holy ghost ancient spirits spirits that have been generational familiar spirits i command you now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one overflow two overflow three let them go now let them go now lift your hands lift your hands i'm seeing a number of ladies there are all kinds of spirits manifesting in the night as a man and a woman manifesting as animals in your sleeps and dreams in the name of jesus where are those ladies fire is looking for them now i separate you from those spirits i separate you from those covenants i separate you from those ordinances any man any woman any entity appearing to you in the night using the faces of men and animals in the name of jesus i command by the spirit a severance between you and them hallelujah sir this baba can i talk to you sir please come god is about to change your story forever i don't know you sir but i want to pray for you stand up please stand up sir i'm looking at you in a vision and i'm seeing you are not alone you came with some people your children one one child your son eh? only you no there's a son is he where is he come come and stand daddy i want to pray for you that this life of hardship god one please stand up please stand up you don't have to kneel down sir this is your dad i want to pray for you you came believing eh august is it augustus i'm hearing the name augustus augustus is it augustus is it augustus augustine or something augustus 
please if that's your name let me just talk to you quickly i want to minimize personal prophecy so that we can do much we want to pray for the sick i want to take out time and do an extensive deliverance tonight because there are people that my sister come this lady this one not you you are not a woman my brother this come lift your hands shout over forever in the name of jesus christ for you and your family it's over in the name of jesus christ sir if you have never believed a man of god in your life what is about to happen to you there is a reason why i asked you to come because the lord showed me that there was a son and i want to prophesy to you that this life of hardship will end like smoke before the wind you believe it sir receive it right now in the name of jesus it's over right now I stretch my hands and I decree and declare that it's over. In the name of Jesus. Over forever. Sir, hold my hands. Go and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go and prosper. By the anointing of the Spirit of God. Go and prosper. Gabriel. Who is Gabriel? Gabriel. I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Please let's hurry up so that we don't waste time. Gabriel. Gabriel. Is he Gabriel? What's your name? Huh? Augustine, come. You are Gabriel. Why is he here? Augustine, I want to pray for you. Where's your family? My dad is around. Is that... Hold on. There's a man wearing white. Is he your father? White shirt. Call him. Let him come. Who is that? Who is that? There's somebody. I'm seeing somebody wearing white. What's, please coordinate them. What? You're welcome, sir. Your name is Gabriel, sir. I'm going to pray for you. Please stand here. I want to pray for you. This is the guy wearing white. Come. What is he? My brother. Your brother. Come and stand. God wants to change your life. I don't know you, but I saw someone standing close to you wearing white. That's why I said there's somebody wearing white. Two of you, I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. God is going to change your life. Why is he here? Your name is Gabriel too. You too? I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God. Honestly, I tell you, God is visiting families. I don't know if it's because it's 1st October, but I see strange miracles. You, this one, put your hand on your stomach there right now in the name of jesus i'm seeing fire coming on you and the lord is i should tell you he's taking something away from your stomach that's what is happening right now in the name of jesus i command that thing to go now my brother there is oppression there's a spirit that you need to be delivered from right now in the name of jesus i set you free by the power of the holy spirit out now of his life and his family help two of them God is delivering them. This is the spirit that is destroying their family. What's your name, sir? Augustine. Augustine. Where's the other Augustine? Okay, you are the one. You are the Augustine. Where are you from? Abia State. Abia State. Yes. I want to pray for you. God wants to give your family a miracle. Do you believe that? Lift your hands. There's bad luck in your life. The Lord is asking me to end it now. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. I end bad luck. Over. The boy doesn't even believe. As you are standing, the anointing still touch you, but it doesn't have faith. Don't come and stand here and you are wondering. I'm not a herbalist. Have I prayed for you? What's your name? Yetu. Yetu. What is Yetu? I'm seeing why he... Is it Y E T U or Y T U or Y T U something like that? Y T U, something that has to do with Y T U. Y E T U. I don't know if it's part of someone's name or something. Y T U. Who is that? That's her name. What's her name? Y T U. Can you imagine? How can you call somebody's name Y T U? You can guess Gabriel. You can guess Mary. But yet I want to pray. There's something being taken from her life. Hold my hands. And the Lord is saying I should take it away. In the name of Jesus, let it roll like a curtain. 
and live her life right now in the name of Jesus Christ this is of the devil and I release your wife right now by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus your miracle has come your miracle has come you love Jesus my friend look at me you love Jesus I want to pray for you ah, in the name of Jesus why is she here your dad there is a copper that I want to pray for there is a copper something is coming on you my dear let me pray for you don't worry if, if I if all I do I, I just lay my hands on you um, it, it doesn't matter please why are you here you are Gabriel Gabriel in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for this guy God is giving you favor great favor great favor in the name of Jesus Christ there's there's bad luck in your life and your family but it's going now in the name of Jesus Christ it's going that's why you're here Gabriel Aleku is there this is like an idol Oleku or Aleku eh? Aleku Aleku who is that eh hold on where are you from Aleku this is something that has to do with a tree is there something like that you say what Why are they coming out? What is why you? They name somebody after the idol, and the Lord is saying, "Who, who is the person? Whose name? This is it's not just an idol. We are going to pray for Benway State, but the, every state has a devil somewhere. I'm saying this is like somebody's name. Ale Ale Kuos Ale something like that. Ale Ku also. Who is this? Huh? What's that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What's your name? Eh? Grace. Please, can you help us with this mic? The mic, please. Where are you from? Benway. You are from Benway. Yes. The Lord is showing me something. Look at me. If I'm right, say I'm right. If, if it's no, say no. I'm seeing you lying down and you are having a dream. Yes. And in the dream, they are calling this name I've been calling. Yes. is that true they call that name three times one two three that idol is that true yes sir. from that day when you woke up your life was never the same again is that true give her the mic now let her talk yes sir. i want to pray for you look at me hold my hands if you are from benway here hold my hands anything any programming that has been done with any god You'll be surprised what will happen now. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone here from Benway whose destiny has been tied to any tree or any devil, right now, I use this lady as a point of contact. As God is touching her, Shakato Totokata, Breketo Skote Satariatosia, Leketabosh, out of their lives now, out of their destinies now. Daddy, let me pray for you, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. I've been coming, sir. You've been coming, sir? Yes. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? Sir? What do you do? I'm a staff of a med I have to pray for you, sir. Because I look at you, and not, not only because I'm looking at you, nobody will look at you and know, but there's serious depression, and I have to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, 
you have do you know what they call the cause of hardship you are not a lazy man but there is hardship in your life and the lord is asking me to help you can i pray for you sir in the name of jesus christ lord i pray for this our daddy let there be a miracle right now in his life i command this yoke of hardship to go let it go forever in the name of jesus let it go forever jumai 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 is that your name uh well i'll pray for you but this is not the person i'm seeing jumai i'll pray for you your family is oppressed there is a spirit that must go now bring her i've not even started praying bring her there is a, a a wicked spirit that i see in this family a very wicked spirit that i see in this family this is something that is older than older than old this is hundreds of years old but in the name of jesus i'm praying now i use you as a point of contact I command that spirit you must go now. Hallelujah. Please just allow me. This is Juma, I'll pray for you. But I'm seeing a family. This is like a curse. No matter what the men do, they never rise. The Lord is saying I should break it. Something is happening to a family right now. Let me pray. My sister, this is your first time here. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Don't be afraid. As I pray for you, the Lord is going to open a door in your destiny that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, I hold your hands now and decree and declare that everything that has tied you down, everything that has tied you down, right now in the name of Jesus, there is disfavor in your life anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you i hold your hands and i release you right now in jesus name i want to pray in a hurry there is a family all the men it doesn't matter whether you are hard working whether you go to school or not but the lord is asking me to pray for that family right now lord where are they I'm stretching my hands now and I'm declaring anyone here inside outside under the sound of my voice that belongs to this category as I stretch my hands right now I release the power of God to that family right now I speak to the men in that family arise now arise now arise now arise now arise now help that woman arise now arise now the men in that family arise now arise now in the name of jesus there's somebody here you lost your job in the month of march march you lost your job Please, where is that person? You were walking, but in the month of March. I want us to hurry up. I, I'm, I'm trying to see that we conserve time. The month of March. I don't know if you are, except if he's a person, his family maybe overflow tree. Then they can just locate him. You lost your job. There's something. You lost your job in the month of March. Where is that person? Please, quickly, if there's someone like that. What were you doing? I was the banker. I was the banker. You are a banker? Yes, sir. Something happened? Yes, sir. And they dismissed you? Yes, sir. What are you doing now? I'm doing my PG program for now. Do you believe if I pray for you, you will get a job? Yes, sir. Will you come and testify? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where have you been praying for? Huh? Sorry. Where have you been praying for for a job? Uh, same bank. Bank the same job. bank. Same bank. You want them to call you back? Yes, sir. Do you believe they can call you back? Sure. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Because you see, I'm looking at something that had to do with money, and truly the guy was innocent. But they just joined people, 
and since there was nobody to stand for him they joined everybody and threw them out but in the name of jesus whatever should not leave you and left you i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now hear me i know many of you may not why is he here sir come well stand up sir you were outside yes, overflow three overflow three yes you sir. lost your job where were you working i'm working in hospital which hospital? Counter. which hospital Tukutuku medical centers so that you see we don't ask this question because we're prying into your privacy i hope you're not embarrassed sometimes we ask it so that people don't think that this thing because there are still people with all these things they see they still believe that maybe someone is playing games at least this one is not you are watching it now which hospital sir tukutuku medical center zaria at uh, tukutuku okay where are you working now i'm just i'm managing with one private school what do you want god to do for you just get back the job back to that place. no 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 another job sir another job yes. do you believe if i pray for you god will give you a job i believe that do you know why i'm prophesying to you in the open so that you will testify in the open too what's your name sir i'm paul paul yes sir god will give you a job eh? amen the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord listen so when it has to do things there we don't legislate we make petitions but the earth has he given to the sons of men i give you a job now in the name of jesus christ i prophesy it in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus you will go and return with him in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord um how many of us are trusting god for healing miracles or came with loved ones that are really sick okay we have a lot to do so what will happen is we'll take a break now to minister very quickly to the sick and then after that i'm still going to minister to people shortly before we do the final prayer will that be okay now but while we are doing that please no laziness there will be prayer points are we together there will be prayer points once the prayer point comes pray because in that prayer point you will receive your miracle praise the lord but don't sit down yet I'm, I'm not walking around but i just want to i'm seeing an angel of the lord directing me to someone there is there is something that we must settle here i'm seeing an anointing going around this place i'm seeing an anointing going around this area there is oppression over someone's destiny that's the lady in the name of jesus i command that devil to go now you must let her go in the name of jesus christ Bring out. There's no space here, right? Please, don't push them. Don't push them. We are coming back. Just take her out to wait for me. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? I want to get the chuo. Mama, I want to get the chuo. I want to get the chuo. I want to pray for you. I'll pray for you. Let it be over now that oppression let it be over by the spirit in the name of jesus christ this is where i'm coming to in the name of jesus hold on hold on in the name of jesus i saw light moving across here and god wants to visit a family right now three of them one two three where are they right now in the name of jesus christ let the visitation come now no hiding the lord must touch them that's why you came the lord must touch you Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, that's all we come to do. Let her go now. Casting crowds, out, lifting hands, bowing hearts, that's all we come to do. In your name. Look at me. 
that girl look at me shout Jesus something is tying you let it lose you now I stretch my hands to you let it be over now hallelujah now please for those of you coming here for the first time we take our time we you see that we don't announce instant miracles except because we don't have the time our time is very limited praise the Lord now this is what we are going to do um, while I give you the prayer request please listen carefully those please listen carefully I want to pray particularly particularly no matter what overflow you are in if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb don't come now but when it's time to come I want you to come I want to pray for you by myself but any other issue those inside I want you to come stand here and then parts of overflow two maybe half of overflow two can join them now overflow one please you go to your projector stand overflow two and those spilling over at the roadside you can move to the projector stand overflow three if God grants grace and there's time I'll just run and come and visit you briefly just to let you know we're together overflow three move to your projector stand hallelujah and we're going to pray very quickly please if they don't prophesy to you or they don't minister to you don't worry we have to pray quickly so that I'll focus and do other things I want everybody to receive will that be fine but those who are trusting God for fruit of the womb whether you're in overflow one two three wherever I like you to please come those online doesn't matter any nation those following us online doesn't matter your nation you're trusting God for a miracle I want you to connect right now by faith hallelujah so we're going to do three things at the same time number one you're going to be submitting your prayer request to the ushers number two you're going to be praying the prayers that I'll give you we are preparing our faith and then number three will come out is that all right praise the Lord so let's do that very quickly very quickly please you're trusting God or you came with a sick person now is your time to come out please quickly 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 Jesus we bless you I don't know you reign Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, is what we've come to do. Casting crowds, we are lifting hands, bowing hearts, is what we've come to do. It's in your name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. You came with her. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave her now. Leave her now. In the name of Jesus. Can you lay your hands on her, Jimmy? Just on her chest or anywhere. Just touch her there. In the name of Jesus, I decree. I curse that spirit. You go and you go forever. In the name of Jesus. Now this is what will happen. Please, we are going to be very fast. We have to be fast. You see that there are lots of people. Uh, our miracle services. If you came with someone, uh, just be patient. We are going to attend to them. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have, uh, we have many hands. And by the grace of God, will coordinate will make it very fast ushers please be collecting the prayer requests if your loved ones are yet to send their own send them a text quickly and she can join the queue just keep them somewhere i'm going to lay my hands on them praise the lord how many overflows do we have there's an extra overflow i see by the road it has spilled over maybe overflow four 
you can uh, let's see ah, we have to be fast praise the lord okay this is what will happen um pastor jimmy will be at the overflow outside here pastor alpha you'll be at the overflow here benga you would go to overflow three uh, is there someone outside here who is outside here pastor alpha is outside um, promise promise you will be here with pastor alpha and then um, pastor femi you'll be with um, you'll be with benga right there at the overflow inside here i don't know how many people are left and by god's grace god will grant us grace and we'll have a lot more people to be able to minister okay kenny kenny join join um a jimmy you join a jimmy there i think that's that's all right so far let's let's just trust god for grace father we agree in the name of jesus christ that for everyone we are praying for it doesn't matter who lays hands on them let there be miracles in the name of jesus christ let there be miracles the devil is a liar let there be miracles in the name of jesus put your hand on your stomach my dear i want to remove something from your body now in the name of jesus i curse that spirit that devilish spirit father let there be miracles in jesus name please let's go very quickly we will need more hands i don't know if we still have people, I know they may Aaron. What if you are not doing anything? Please, if you can help out in overflow three with them so that at least we can help to coordinate things there. Praise the Lord. Father, let there be an avalanche of miracles here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please worship team. You're going to give us, we're going to pray one prayer first. I'd like you to decree and declare and say, Father. I prophesy over myself that my miracle locates me now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Father, we give you all the praise. Do what only you know how to do. Come and change master free. Give me a testimony. Do what only you know how to do. Can I hear you say to my only you? Do what only you know how to do. Can you lift up a voice and say, Do what only you do know? Do what only you know how to do. Hey, do what only you know how to do. Hey, come and change my story. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. Do what only you know. Do what only you know how to do. Somebody say, Do what only do what only you know how to do. I said, do what only you know how to do. Do what only you know how to do. How to do. How to do. Come and change my story. Come and change my story. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. Do what only you know. Do what only you know. My trust is in you. Hey, the ancient of days. My trust is in you. Hey, I put them on you. Say, my trust is in you. Hey, I put them on you. Say, my trust is in you. I own of Judah. Say, my trust is in you. Oh, I put them on 
Judah. My trust is in you. The ancient of days. My trust is in you. Say, oh, I put them on you, Lord. My trust is in you. Hey, I put them on you, Lord. My trust is in you. In the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that tonight is my night of testimony. Lift your voice and begin to pray over your request. Lift your voice and begin to declare. Prophesy. Tonight is my night of testimony. Shaka toko to preketekata. Shaka paskata preketekos. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Pray, lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, we declare. Make sure you are praying. Lord, I decree and declare. I will not write this twice. I will not write this twice. Lord, we decree and declare. Miracles. Miracles. Are you praying? Miracles. Visit family. There are still more that should come quickly. Apokoto prokoto sekete balalaba. You reign, you ancient Zion skin. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Are we done? Are all the requests here, please? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I bow my knees before the God of my covenant and I decree and declare that every request placed here, I turn it to a testimony now. I turn it to a testimony now. Strange testimonies now. Strange testimonies now. Lord, I cry that you step in and do impossible miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you. There are things written here that except the writer, if you read it, you won't even believe that it can happen. But I pray, the God who has the all-seeing eye that can see every request, a representation of every man's pain here, I call on that God, answer by fire. Answer by fire. Father, there are issues here that are impossible with men. Some of them have deadlines that cannot be achieved humanly. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I prophesy, let there be strange miracles. 
Se koto koto bakata. Strange miracles now. For all those connecting from whatever nation, in the name of Jesus, we agree with you here. The same fire that is on this altar through the internet to your various localities you receive the same testimony in the name of Jesus every human agent that must partner with God for this request to be granted we force them from their hiding places to appear now In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever must die for this request to be answered. In the name of Jesus, the ground opens and swallows them. Whoever must lack sleep for this request to be granted we seize their peace and their sleep now hear me any mortal man that says over his dead body for you to testify may god answer their prayers this night The Lord is opening my eyes. I know they are still ministering outside. Let's be patient. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing trees. I'm seeing trees in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing these trees. It's like a representation of families. Hold on, please. I'm seeing these trees like a representation of families. And I'm looking at it. I've never seen a tree bringing out blood, human blood. But in this vision, I'm seeing a tree, but I'm seeing human blood. This is like a representation of families. I decree and declare. I don't know what family the devil is taking advantage of, but I want to pray now. I'm not prophesying. I'm speaking for, for God to locate a family that must not go back this night in this situation. Lord, I decree and declare wherever that family is, right now in the name of Jesus, may the fire of God locate that family now. May the fire of God locate that family now. The Lord is releasing an anointing. Hold on. Over people. is for supernatural clarity and direction. That's what I hear. Receive it now. People are receiving it. People are receiving it. I prophesy. Clarity. Clarity. God is answering questions now. By the anointing. If that fire comes on you, you are receiving direction right now. Clarity. Clarity. All the overflows. Clarity. I release that anointing right now. God is giving clarity. Listen, I'm still praying it. I'm seeing anointings that will translate as answers. Should I stay here or should I relocate somewhere else? Should I start the project or should I stop? Every confusion and anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praying for everybody, but I'm seeing particularly overflow one an anointing for divine recovery divine recovery let me tell you something whatever leaves you can come back to your life are you hearing now there are people who have lost things i'm about to call it into your life now and as that anointing comes on you just know that is your time of recovery lord where are they where are those who have lost things that need recovery shakata kata kata Shakata kata kata proskete kata everywhere everywhere 
everywhere inside outside outside the grace for recovery the grace for recovery i release that grace now over individuals and over families over individuals and over families individuals who have lost things lost things lost opportunities lost opportunities somebody is recovering an opportunity somebody is recovering something that left you hallelujah the angel of the lord is leading me here there are at least four people this grace for recovery must come upon you i'm seeing at least four people something you have lost is about to look for you something you have lost must look for you i force it to look for you by the power of the holy ghost hallelujah listen let me tell you i told you god answers you by bringing the anointing in your direction that coalition with the anointing is what will program your testimony and all of a sudden you will see strange testimonies happening to you hallelujah i'm seeing a strong man in four families that god is clearing out of the way listen listen i don't say things like this lightly but i'm seeing at least i'm seeing two women and two men who have sat for long on the destinies of people they don't even know they are the ones where are they shakatos keta brakatos kakatekatos inside and outside whoever in the name of jesus by the fire of the holy ghost any man sitting on anybody's destiny here you want to rise but they stop you you want to move but they sit on your glory i clear them out of the way now listen you should attend a miracle service like this and know that you attended a miracle service like this mama you see that the devil wants to kill this woman with cancer eat her into pieces with cancer and destroy her your mother you are the ones who brought her hold the mother and two of you come you two of you need deliverance first leave mama come come and stand someone should hold or get a seat for mama to sit i've prayed for her but i'm looking i'm this is this is your mother two of you i want to pray for you eh what you need i know you brought your mother to be healed of cancer but for you god must heal you first you will need deliverance eh? i'm not saying you are witches but i have to pray for you this is the instruction god is giving me father in the name of jesus you will not allow these ladies to go down the way of trouble and sorrow and pain and discouragement therefore i lay my hands on you in the name of jesus fire over every wicked devil in the name of jesus you came to stand in for your mother but satan has his own plan for you in the name of jesus Kai. wickedness is real i held these ladies and the lord showed me a vision i'm seeing a man a real herbalist sitting down on the ground and i'm seeing something that looks like a pot they are writing names of people with blood blood not chalk they will write it and throw it inside the pot write it and throw it this is an Igbo family write it throw it inside the pot lord i don't know why you showed me this vision but in the name of jesus i don't care where the family is but in the name of first my first prayer point is that that herbalist must die first in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't like the prayer point, say amen to the one you believe. But my first prayer point is that the wicked herbalist, this is someone's destiny. These people are here. Oh, I'm praying. You may not even know you are the one. I say it again. Whoever is that man on the ground writing whose name? Whether it's your marital destiny, whether it's your breakthrough, 
in the name of Jesus let the earth open and swallow that wicked man who say now who say now who say now who is that please let her come please quickly you are who say now what's your name huh? who say now I want to pray for you eh? I'll pray for two of you but you are the one I want to pray for what's your name from where what state are you from FCT. you are from FCT do you believe in favor shout it no, you are not shouting you have shout wow. in the name of Jesus Christ I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a lot of bad luck for you and your family and this is what God is bringing for you favor who say now I want to pray for you you are who say now to madam please come you too is it mother and daughter or you are coming by yourself you are, you are who say now to I'll pray for you but this is the lady I want to speak to you love Jesus with all your heart I want to pray for you God is bringing a major breakthrough for you and your family major breakthrough I lay my hands right now and I command it. let it happen right now in the name of Jesus where are you from my dear Jalingo Taraba in the name of Jesus the Lord gives you a miracle now in the name of Jesus let me pray for you every bad luck must live your life now Eh? every bad luck must live your life I lay my hands and I command that spirit to go this lady only bad things look for her there are people like that when good things come they just turn there is a spirit that turns it away everybody is getting a job something that is simple when is your turn let me tell you something hardship is not poverty hardship is a spirit you get things but something you can get for two weeks will take you four years. It's hardship. It's a curse. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You can't go, give God glory under that kind of condition. Simple things. You ask somebody out, I want to marry you. They answer you after four years. It's a curse. Are you, are you a demon? It's a curse. You start a building project. You finish after ten years. It's not a blessing. A hard life is worse than poverty this is what the devil has put on the life of this lady I, I take it away now in the name of Jesus and I use her as a point of contact if there is anything on anyone's head that is responsible for bad luck happening in the name of Jesus I command whatever it is let the fire of God come upon it now Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon you and I release favor. In the name of Jesus, favor. I'm seeing someone, you are into printing. Please, let's hurry up. We have to stop a few minutes now so that you are into printing. You print like um, posters, whatever it is you design, you print banners. Please, who is that person? I want to pray for you. You are into printing. Uh, I will pray for you. But the person I'm seeing, I'm not saying if you want to do it, if you are currently doing it, you are into it. For how long? Since my, my child was up. I was born into printing. Your father is a printer? Yes, sir. Where do you do it? Mina. Mina. Yes, sir. From Mina, you came here? I'm serving in Kagzara. In because the person I'm seeing is about to lose a lot of money. This is a contract or project that someone will give you. You will suffer and do it and something will happen and destroy that whole job. And the person will say you must pay. And it's going to cost you hundreds. I don't know. Well, it may not be so much money to you, but I'm seeing something. Losses of at least this is a very big project that the person is even angry. I'm seeing something that even has to do with police. Because the person will say that you went and gave the job. All of you are into printing. What are you printing? I need to printing. What printing? 
Books, everything in every place. Books, you yes. too. Your dad. All of you, I'll pray for you. You are standing for somebody. We have to avert this. This time of recession is not the best time to get into trouble with police. Say amen. amen. You want to stop it now. So that whether it's your fault or not, when you are in trouble, you are in trouble. And you see, the way the devourer works is that he will wait just when I'm, I'm soon going to do that prayer. Where things work, just when the miracle is about to happen, something happens and destroys your life. I have to pray for you. Where is your dad? Huh? He stays in Abuja. He stays in Abuja. That's where you stay too? Yes. What's your name? Peace. Peace. I want to pray so that we'll stop trouble eh? in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we use your daughter as a point of contact to pray. Every trouble we avert now. You two, you are into the printing. Where? Abu Press. Abu Press. Yes. You work with Abu Press. Yes. Hey, you work there now. It's not your own. Okay, but I will still pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace. The one for me now. I release you. Eh? Can I pray for businesses? Yes, sir. Can I speak over businesses? Huh? You are into printing? Uh, what's your name? Hassan. 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 You, you, you need to... Um, well, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you are very shabby. Huh? You need to organize your life. You're a smart young man, but you see how you are looking like uh, a thief. You'll be smart when you are coming to the house of God. Listen, when you, people are, when you are coming to the house of God, don't embarrass him. This is a family, but you look smart. You don't dress, you see him. No shoes, your hair is scattered, not combed. You look smart. Eh? You are my friend. I want you, it will be difficult for you to progress in life like this. It will be difficult for you to get a good wife like this. It will be difficult for you to get many good things. <laughs> Appearance is the seed for acceptance. Don't say it doesn't matter. Dress well. The house. Organize his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Organize his destiny. There is a spirit of excellence. Excellence is a spirit. You receive it in Jesus' name. I'll quickly pray for you. Doesn't matter where you're standing. You, you are into printing too. You too. In the name of Jesus, all those into printing, I lay my hands, Pastor Lawrence, grace for you. You will do well. You will get jobs in Jesus' name. There are some of us, what we need now, we are at a point in our lives where humanly speaking, we have paid our price. What you need is favor. And we are going to pray. It. Is that true? Are there people like that here? There are others you have not paid your price. Paying for favor is putting you into trouble. What I need to pray for you for is grace not to be lazy. Laziness is also a spirit. Many of us don't know. It takes a lot of laziness. Um, something is leaving you. That devil must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are to print in two? In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is somebody you so clothes. You are a serious tailor. But for a long time, this is from April, everything just went down. I don't mean gradually down like this it's almost as if please who is that person you are a tailor you sew clothes you are a serious tailor but something just happened i'm seeing the month of april and everything just went down you are the one you sew clothes where Yango. who knows you if you are a serious tailor they should know you here who are who, you've sewn people's clothes here Okay, Zango. Yes, there's a shop. I'm what ha then what happened? There's a shop. I'm working for somebody. So last month, he sent me out and closed the shop for no reason. Last month? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll pray for you. 
if you did something wrong and they pursued you when you come here you ask for mercy you don't complain even if it's my shop and you don't do well i will drive you everybody wants to succeed so let's let's be very honest when we are before god praise god when you are before god if you tell the truth that's even what will provoke his mercy you understand if you if if i employ you don't be embarrassed my dear but if i employ you and you are not bringing me anything and i'm paying you why won't i downsize and drive you so don't make it look as if because this person you are saying drove you i'm not seeing the person as a wicked person no something happened and it's your fault eh you need the mercy of god and god will help you don't make it you see that if if it's not revelation now you will now blame someone else and say that person is wicked my prayer for you is that god will bless you too huh but please don't be angry i'm not seeing that person that person did exactly what i would have done father in the name of jesus show your daughter mercy if you need mastery may god improve your skill may god improve your value and i pray for you in jesus name god will not leave you hungry the god we serve will change your story tonight in the name of jesus you experience his mercy you experience his grace madam you are a tailor where samaru market. samaru market you have your shop yes sir i want to pray for you yes sir you're a good woman, but you are always entering trouble with those you sold their clothes. You don't used to finish on time. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is showing me. Don't be embarrassed. This is a family. It may just need... You are a very good tailor. I'm not, I'm not against you. Don't feel bad. I'll send some people. That's what I'm saying now. Yes, and there's a problem now. They're even angry. Yes, sir. Because they are supposed to sew something for them for an occasion. Uh, and you didn't finish and now the person is really angry so these are some of the things we are talking about as god steps in let's allow his mercy just tell them sorry because you i want you would have been far more than you are now but there is a spirit of delay sitting on your glory hold my hands you must go now to draw from you again again yeah. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Listen, I want you to mark this woman. The kind of favor this woman will enter into from this night will surprise you. I'm saying it in the open. The Lord will give you favor. You are a tailor. Why are you just coming, my brother? We are praying for people here. Father, in the name of Jesus, help our brother to succeed. Hmm? It's unbelief. If God is calling a case to help people, huh? you come out proudly. You don't stand there, you are ashamed. You understand? Sana, please. You are a student and you are doing it. You people too, you are tailors. See, the tailors are now coming out. We'll pray for your business. Please, all tailors, do a good job. We believe in excellence. Don't say, I'm praying for you publicly. It's not just endorsing you to destroy people's clothes. Do a good job. Praise the Lord. Do a good job and we'll pray for you. There are too many people here. Two school of ministry wants to do their graduation gown. In two weeks, we are graduating our students. 243 students. Imagine that you get the contract to do their gown. If you do a good work, God will honor you. If you do a nonsense work, people will not endorse you just because it's the house of God. Praise the Lord. My brother, you want to study? Where? Oh, you are a student? Yes. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord grant you grace. God will raise help for you. In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are a tailor? In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you. You need deliverance. I command the spirit. Hi. This lady, there's oppression in your dream. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. You didn't come out for Taylor. You came out by the mercies of God. You see what I'm saying? This is the Taylor now. You see what? Let me pray for her, please. I see a wild animal. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing Kai. Lord Jesus, mercy. I command every legal access Satan has over you. When this lady gets angry, she can swallow you. 
it's not our fault it's a spirit be free now look how many people are holding one lady in the name of Jesus I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit let me advise you if you want to enter a relationship pray if you want to marry pray you listen to what I'm telling you you see the body of Christ we don't listen and we do I'm not saying this lady is a witch please don't get me wrong but I'm saying you should pray now I'm not condemning her but imagine that you're in a relationship with this lady and you married last week you see this if this lady is angry that spirit will manifest no matter how strong you are she will beat the living daylight out of you when that spirit leaves her she will tell you sorry and then it will come back this is what God is helping us to solve are we together now imagine you're a customer and just because you gave her 10,000 you insulted her when that spirit rises she will tear your cloth or beat you Lord Jesus we invoke your mercy upon her in Jesus name madam you're a tailor too where judge Judgy. I'll pray for you you're a tailor too where you're in Nazareth state in the name of Jesus may God increase you I speak to your business let it increase experience increase delay lives your life in Jesus name I pray amen if you're in business please lift your hands I want to speak over your life please believe the prayer I'm praying for you there is an anointing that makes people prosper why are you here you are tailors you are all tailors what do you mean you are tailors this gentleman you are a tailor too okay please come you would have come out since so that our time you know our time you are all tailors you are a tailor too I hope we all know that this is the house of God. Please, don't, don't tell lies. If you are not a tailor here, I'm, the prayer will reach everybody. If you are not into tailoring, please don't embarrass yourself. If you are into tailoring, leave them, leave them, please. Provided you are, I don't know what is this with God and tailors, but let's pray because God wants to increase you. You look like a tailor you see some of you don't look like tailors you are you are not you are not dressing like tailors this gentleman is sharp and smart he looks like a tailor Ejimi teaches that you represent your brand if you are a man of God you show it by the anointing if you are a tailor if you are a public speaker you show it by accuracy of communication if you are a tailor you are marketing your products at all times you don't say come to my shop no if I cannot see your tailoring prowess on you, then I shouldn't patronize you. Father, change the lives of these great people of ours. I'm just going to lay my hands and touch your head. And in the name of Jesus, I pray, may your business step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands, please go back to your seat. In Jesus' name, that yoke leaves you now. In the name of Jesus, grace for you grace for you grace for you go and increase go and multiply my dear go and increase go and multiply increase madam multiply go and increase go and multiply go and multiply go and increase go and multiply go and increase go and multiply go and increase whether you're a tailor or not, after this you don't come out again. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In the name of Jesus. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In Jesus' name. If you're in business, please. Any kind of good, godly business, lift your hands. If you're in a bad business, repent. And do something honorable. Listen, let me mention an example of bad business. Any business that has to do with smuggling drugs. You are a thief. You are not in business. You stop it. I don't care whether you are helping young guys around Samaru connect with a snuff. That's not a business. Are we together? There are businesses that are demonic. Writing exams for people. Writing jam for people. Writing, I will never pray for you for increase. That's not a godly business. Business that has to do with you having an affair with somebody's husband. 
somebody's wife is not a good business. Prostitution, not a good business. Dirty business that has to do with ungodly things, no. No, sir. Let's be very sincere before God. But I pray sincerely from the depth of my heart. The power to prosper. The grace that can come on a business and turn it around overnight. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Listen. Please, I want you to be childlike enough and believe this prayer I'm praying for you. And watch what God does. Some of you, you don't have any clients, you don't have any customers. Some of you overnight, just by this prayer, by miracle service, October, it will be like a dream. I prophesy to you. Some of you, you have the ideas, what you need is capital. I declare, let somebody rise up who is willing to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, what you need is an endorsement of someone credible in your field. So that it will open doors for you. May someone who has gone ahead of you accredit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are trying to sell properties. There's nobody to buy. But if someone comes to buy it, God will use it to honor you. I call somebody to buy it now. In the name of Jesus. Now I prophesy favor on everyone. I decree and declare tonight the main auditorium overflow. One, two, three, those following online. The kind of favor you have never seen in your life. May my God make it happen in your life now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Esther, the village girl, became Esther the queen through favor. Ruth, the hungry woman who was about to die, became Ruth, the wife of Boaz. I don't know who I'm prophesying to, but the favor that would change your story in one month, I release it to you right now. I release it to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ help that woman there please there are people from January till now you have never testified it's not that you don't want to come out but nothing has happened I stand before the God of heaven and I decree and declare may my God do something in your life that will force you to come and testify in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare I don't know what door has closed between you and your next level you have been knocking for a long time and that door has refused to open I open that door for you right now I open that door for you right now any terminal disease ravaging anyone's body you get healed right now two weeks you are back again you get healed three weeks, you are back again. I set you free right now. Help that. I set you free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The only thing you know that happens in your family is fight and quarrel. No love. No joy. When someone is about to rise, a troublemaker comes. I declare. May the Prince of Peace, May the Prince of Peace step into our homes now. Step into our families now. You are beautiful. You love God. You are a well-mannered lady. No husband. Shakotos kaparakata. Skalabata kato sata priyata. Sheketokoto priyata. I'm led to pray this prayer. You don't hear me pray it all the time, but I decree and declare. Every lady here, ready for a relationship, a godly one, I call your husband to your life now.
every gentleman who wants to marry but no job no money the devil is <laughs> the devil is using lack of finances to rubbish your life in the name of jesus the god that can lift a man from a dunghill may that god lift our brothers here right now any project you started this year that you were hoping to have completed by now and as it is you need a miracle i release the finisher's anointing upon you in the name of jesus christ all those writing exams jacatos kataprati alakatos in the name of jesus the grace to not only write your exams but to finish well i release it upon you right now in the name of jesus christ all our, our brothers and sisters who travel from several places to write post you and me in the name of jesus we give you admission here i don't care who you know or who you don't know we give you admission here now hallelujah school of ministry students are writing their exams by nine o'clock tomorrow in the name of jesus grace for retention receive it there are other people writing promotion exams others there are, we have a lot of postgraduate students doing their phd work research you know their thesis whatever it is anything that has refused to come to completion in your life I, re I release upon you grace for completion in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we are done give me two minutes I need to pray for our spiritual lives some of you started well with God but right now you need prayers you need serious prayers prayer zero fasting zero word life zero passion for the things of God zero you are not bad but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. The fire. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The fire that must come upon the candle of your destiny. Sokoto Pakata. From the main hall here. Overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. Take a fresh fire for your work with God. Take a fresh fire for your work with God. hear me some of you the moment you open your bible it's as if something happens and you close it back it's not normal i decree and declare passion for the word of god receive it right now some of you used to pray seriously you even used to attend the the weekly prayer department meeting but things happen you were offended with god and several things happen in your life and you say I'm, i've been praying but i've not seen result and you stop i release upon you grace to go back grace to go back to the prayer altar grace to go back to the prayer altar grace to go back to the prayer altar hear me those of you who as you are seeking money you are forgetting god as you are seeking marriage you are forgetting god it's not that you want to do so life is pushing you away from god whatever is drawing you away from god i cause that in now listen we are rounding up god and prosperity can go hand in hand god and marriage can go hand in hand whatever must make you leave god to get it is of the devil may it live your life forever now keep your hands lifted the last prayer point God is looking for men and women of the spirit simple one minute prayers that will change your life now lift your hands I want to pray for something to come upon these hands listen mm. there must be an evidence if you belong to this ministry this is a supernatural ministry this is a ministry of signs wonders diverse manifestations 
I will not end this meeting without this impartation. I'm praying now at the count of three. Let an unction, let an ancient mantle land on someone's hand. One, two, three. Take it now. Healing anointing. Take it now. Prophetic mantle. Take it now. Grace for signs and wonders. Receive it. May your hands become healing hands. May your hands become miracle hands. Deliverance hands. Favor hands. Hear me? The grace to win souls like never before. I know it's old school. I'm both old and new school. Depending on the one that does not work. Soul winning is never old school. The Bible says he that winneth souls is wise. I pray for you. Grace for a dimension. Evangelism through signs and wonders. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. The last prayer for you. The mantle of honor. The grace that distinguishes a man above his contemporaries. I lay my hands on my head and I prophesy to you. Carry that anointing right now. Carry that anointing right now. Experience strange levels of honor. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. Every expectation you brought here, whether I mentioned it or not, I'm agreeing with you now. Within 24 hours, let your miracle start. Within 24 hours, let your miracle start. Those of you who came from far, before you get to where you came from, you will collide with miracle after miracle. Testimony after testimony. Hallelujah. If there is anyone here in ministry, a man of God, a woman of God, you have a fellowship, you have a church, I pray for you. The fire that is here, carry it back to your church. Carry it back to your fellowship. Carry it back to your place of ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everyone, keep standing. You are here. Our time is gone. Everyone, please stand. You are here. You are worshiping with us for the first time. Overflow 1, overflow 2, and inside. This is your first time. Please make your way here overflow three just make your way to the front of your projector stand and look at me let's honor them koinonia quickly <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord please keep standing two minutes we are done let's honor them they are coming may god bless all of you who continually invite people to come listen let me tell you one truth i am very honored to have the privilege to lead this campaign of bringing the reality of the power and the presence of god to people when you invite people you don't necessarily make a ministry bigger yes you increase them in numerical strength but the truth about it is that you are giving people an opportunity to have encounters hallelujah for all of you who take out time to invite people, may the God I serve bless you. Clear the way for them as they come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for
for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 